Welcome to the November issue of Network on Television. I'm Karen Bennett. And I'm Jalen Smith. We're in downtown Seattle amidst typical November weather here in the courtyard of the Two Union Square Complex. I know what you mean, Sharon. It's time for this cool head to warm up. Sharon, this property is one of our major accounts. That's right, Jay. And a little later, we'll see how some choices our large customers make now and in the future will influence the way we do utility business. But first, we'll update some City Light news and then share with you a special video we've recently produced. Sharon, during the month of October, the Combined Charities campaign kicked into high gear. Some highlights were the bite of City Light with treats to delight the palate and the stomach. The Energy Management Auction offers great opportunities to enjoy activities and goodies all year while supporting charitable organizations. Another culinary delight was the Western Chili Feed, sponsored by the Facilities Management Division. Anyone who's been in the utility business for a while knows that acquiring new resources for power generation is quite a challenge. And Sharon, locating a new hydroelectric project on the South Fork of the Tolk River has been under consideration for a long time. And work is finally underway to make the South Fork Tolk Hydro Project a reality. Tucked away in the East King County Hills is an earthen dam and the Tolk Reservoir, source of one-third of the city's drinking water. Preparation for building the powerhouse and the pipeline started here this summer. Work will stop over the cold winter months and start again in the spring. The challenges of the project, building five miles of pipeline very close to drinking water. There's no room for error. Ron Bates of Civil Engineering is the project manager. The most difficult part of this project was to trim costs in different areas of this project and the powerhouse design and other things to make it economical. And so that really is the most difficult part of this project up to now, just to get it economically feasible and get it licensed and approved by all of the agencies. The pipeline will start here, next to the water department's line, and travel through hilly terrain down to the powerhouse site. Part of the project involves strengthening this unusual structure for seismic safety. The water department and King County are sharing some improvement costs. There are several benefits to this interagency cooperation. One of the things that this is helping is to, to keep the rates of the water department uh, down compared to what they might have been because we are paying the water department uh, headwater rights uh, for this project. Uh, if we had not built this project, they would have in a few years had to put another pipeline in to serve the water demands of the city of Seattle. And so it's, it does help out the both departments as far as the rates and it, they pass those savings on of course to the ratepayers. This is one of 15 sedimentation ponds that is being built to catch the muddy water that's expected to run off during construction of the pipeline and the powerhouse. In fact, 90% of the site preparation work being done here at the South Fork Tolt is being done for environmental reasons. The project adds 16 megawatts of generation to City Light's resources. When complete with construction of more than nine miles of transmission lines, an improved access road, and a switch yard providing interconnections to BPA and Puget Power. The project should be finished in fall of 1995. Safety is always in mind when crews work on poles and around energized equipment, but safety comes into clear focus when put to the test. Just how fast and nimble is the response to rescue a coworker who's gotten into trouble? At this year's Governor's Safety Conference, City Lights team placed second in the statewide competition for pole top rescue. Congratulations to crew members Jack Aerosmith and John V. Hill, and their coaches, Lance Stotts and Ed Rasmussen. Well, it's round two for City Lights All Employee Survey. And we hope to maintain a high batting average as we swing into the next phase of the 1993 survey cycle. Everyone received their surveys in early November and surveys are being mailed back as we put this show in the can, so to speak. Some individuals and three divisions will win holiday goodies for their quick and high percentage of survey responses. We're going to close out this NTV with a video we hope further explains why the employee survey 
and efforts to continually improve the way we do business are so important. But remember, we're still interested in your NTV filming location ideas and in your story ideas, too. The number to call is 684-3008. And so, for Network on Television, I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Jalen Smith. Stay tuned, and on with the show. The charges are in place and explosive detonated for a new era in business, government, and in our lives. Our pace picks up every second as we enter the mid-1990s. Scenes shift to a new reality, one we're not familiar or completely comfortable with. Forces are at work that drive utility business to a different place than we've ever been before. And as the seasons change, we don't know exactly where the leaves will fall. It'll be a different pattern altogether. City Light stakeholders, our largest customers, have more choices than ever before. They're watching the energy business and how it affects their bottom line. One message that I would say that's probably the, the biggest impact is competition. That's the loudest word. The second message that to me is as important is people. Uh, the folks who are going to make the change happen are those who can be flexible and change with the forces that force them to change. The folks that become flexible will be those that win. So one, it's competition, and two, it's people. City Light experienced firsthand how a new focus on government practices can turn the tide of public opinion in a matter of minutes. Images are shaped by scenes over which we have little control. The media's power pulls us into a public arena where our side of the story is secondary to flashy headlines and a race for readers. In the near future, our large customers like Boeing here won't be obligated to buy power from City Light. So right in the heart of our territory, if we don't provide service to enhance their profit and growth, they'll buy from a competitor or build their own power plant. The technology and deregulation exist to make that very possible. And what you might see of tomorrow's utility is something of a company that is facing more competition than what we face today. In fact, uh, picture, if you will, at Seattle City Light, perhaps a, an environment where a low-cost producer comes in and is allowed to use your hydropower facilities and your transmission lines and compete with you head-on. Now, if they have a uh, low-cost facility that is cheaper than your own, they'll compete with you head-on to perhaps take away your own customers. And if that's the case, you'll have to be prepared for that competition and perhaps even be forced to change business from the way you do it today. Competition is a new word in the world of public power. We not only have to keep the pace, but stay one step ahead of it. Providing excellent service has never been more important to our customers. We depend on that power um, and we can't take such a casual attitude toward the, toward the reliability and consistency of the of power delivery. We expect it to be there 100% of the time. And we expect the people who are going to deal with us, the employees, to act like they're working for a business. And today, doing business with environmental concerns has become normal practice. We're enhancing fish runs while supplying hydropower. In developing our South Fork Tolt project, 90% of the site preparation involves protecting water supply, wetlands, and the surrounding area. What was new and questionable 15 years ago is now part of the normal way we operate. Exercising new muscles hurts at first. New practices aren't comfortable, but as we become more flexible, we're in shape to stretch, leap toward the future instead of reflecting on the past. We're becoming attuned to new and different needs of internal customers, too. It's a different working world today, and that's just plain fact. We must improve our organization and practices to meet our own new internal needs. Well, I remember when I first came here, it was called the FBI, Friends, Brothers, and In-Laws. And um, that was the only way, I guess, or one of the few ways that people got a job here was, was having parents or other relatives in City Light, and they were pulled from there. About the time when I came in, I guess that was the time when the federal government was starting to get on City Light's case about bringing in uh, minorities. 
and also I guess the city had started a program to make the the people working here to like more representative of the city and then, and now it's gone into uh, trying to create some diversity here so from the time when I first started to when everybody you met on the dock was someone's son till now where everybody you meet now is from all over the city it's changed quite a bit our 1992 employee survey brought a new opportunity for dialogue as all levels of the workforce shared feedback and made new decisions. We were surprised that it was shared this quickly. Uh, been involved in other surveys and it seems like a lot more time passes by before you hear anything on it. Uh, I think the response of coming back to the people was, was timely. Well, in the past, these surveys haven't gone very far. I mean, but I think maybe that with new management all the way to the top and down through the ranks, uh, we'll see. If they do something about it, I think it would be a better place to work. And there was a great deal of feeling that how we treat one another and how we work together with our internal customers really does affect the quality of service our external customers. So I find that this baseline information is really going to be really very, very good for us as we look at how we can achieve quality, quality customer service. And I think that the staff is saying to us that really begins on how we work together. Our emerging workforce is one that values teamwork, clear leadership, creativity, and innovative improvement. With each season, a new cycle begins, and old patterns fall away. But with firmly planted roots, new growth shoots forward. So we can look ahead instead of behind, grow in our careers instead of staying the same, gaze at the future rather than analyze the past. Each of us fit in the picture, and we hold on to different branches with a firm foundation. Our personal strengths bring unique patterns forth to shape our industry and our own futures. Let's build on success, become and remain innovators, look to the future, challenge ourselves as we head toward a new horizon.